in her own words. I couldn't understand why they were so sure that I was the one who knew everything. The former UW student caught up in an international murder mystery defines herself for the first time. Bloom seen for miles. The new condos now up in smoke. And it's not the Space Needle or the Pike Place Fish Throwers, the Seattle attraction named one of the germiest in the world. Working for you. Como 4 News starts right now. What Amanda Knox said today in an Italian courtroom could get her out of prison or lock her away for the rest of her life. For the first time, we hear her explain what happened the night her roommate was murdered. Knox insists police hit her and threatened her to making a false statement. Come before Shamari Stone is live with new details. Shamari? Mary and Dan, Amanda Knox is telling her side of the story in detail. She says that she was at her then boyfriend's house the night of the murder. Cameras flash as Amanda Knox arrived in a packed courtroom. The 21-year-old briefly smiled and waved at her father. Then she took the stand to defend herself for the first time. Under the amount of pressure of everyone they yelling so at me uh, and having them tell me that they were going to put me in prison for prote protecting somebody. She described how police intimidated, point. even hit her during the interrogation. They called me a stupid liar. Mi hanno chiamato stupida bugiarda. And they said that I was trying to protect someone. Prosecutors argued the Seattle native and her then boyfriend, Raffaele Salesito, murdered her roommate, Meredith Kircher, in what they call a drug fueled sex game. A third man has already been convicted. Knox refuted a statement she signed that had placed her at the crime scene. She told the court Italian police forced it out of her. I couldn't understand why they were so sure that I was the one who knew everything. No, and so, in my confusion, e quindi, nella mia I started to imagine, Ho iniziato a immaginare. that maybe I was traumatized, like what they said. Her father, Kurt Knox, says the six-person jury and two judges are seeing the real Amanda Knox, not the one portrayed as Foxy Noxy in international headlines. People are going to get a different picture of who Amanda really is. She is uh, just a regular kid, not this dark angel or whatever it is they want to call her. Back in Seattle, Knox's friends are getting ready to graduate from the University of Washington while she remains in jail. Knox is expected to take the witness stand tomorrow and finish her testimony, and her mother is also expected to testify soon. If convicted, Knox faces life in prison. Now, we want to hear from you. You can share your comments on the Amanda Knox case at comonews.com. Live in the Satellite Center, I'm Shamari Stone, Como 4 News. Thank you, Shamari. So how did this highly publicized case get to this point? This has been going on for more than a year and a half with a lot of he said, she said moments and other twists and turns. Here's a look back at some of the key dates. November 2, 2007, Meredith Kircher is found dead in the apartment she shared with Amanda Knox. Her throat was cut, her body partially closed. Four days later, police arrested Knox, her boyfriend, Raffaele Solecito, and pub owner, Patrick Lumumba. The prosecutor said they killed Kircher when she refused to take part in violent sex. Knox originally told police she heard Kircher's screams from her bedroom. But days later, she changed her story and said she was at her boyfriend's house that night. November 9th of 07, a judge ruled all three suspects be held up to a year as the investigation continued. November 12th. Surveillance video is revealed that shows Knox entering her apartment the night of the murder, contradicting her earlier claim that she wasn't home. November 20th, a fourth suspect, Rudy Guadet, is arrested in Germany. He claimed he was there that night, but someone else killed Kircher. That same day, Patrick Lumumba was cleared and released from jail. A week later, a bloody fingerprint from Amanda Knox was found in the bathroom of her apartment. In the coming weeks, police found DNA from Knox and Kircher on a bloody knife believed to be the murder weapon and a bloody footprint in Knox's bedroom. <laughs> September 16, 2008, the three suspects had their first pre-trial hearing. The judge granted Guadet's request for a fast-track trial. He was found guilty and is serving 30 years in prison. October 27, the judge ruled Knox and Selecito will stand trial for Kircher's murder. January 16 of this year, the trial began. February 6th, the first day of testimony, Selecito stood up in court and declared his innocence. Over the next several weeks, jurors heard testimony about bizarre behavior from Knox before and after the murder, including doing cartwheels in the police station when she was brought in for questioning. 
May 29th, Italian prosecutors wrapped up their case. And now today, Amanda Knox took the witness stand for the first time. Newspapers from all over the world are covering the trial and every move of Amanda Knox from the UK. The Guardian focused on her testimony that she was hit during her interrogation. The Sun decided to key in on the contents of her diary and sex life. Newspapers from around Italy have headlines about her testimony and her claims of mistreatment by police. As this story continues to make headlines, we'll stay on top of it and bring you all the developments as they happen. ABC is there for the Knox trial and we'll have extended coverage tonight on 2020 and Nightline. Tough questions face a King County judge. Is a school just a building or is a school defined by kids, teachers and programs? Come up with Brian Johnson says the judge's answer may determine the fate of a Seattle elementary school. This is Cooper Elementary in West Seattle. The Seattle School Board decided to move the kids and the teachers out and move a new program in. So five days ago, parents stood at a memory wall and said goodbye. Other parents have a different idea. There's a home and a family for all types of diversity, all types of family, all types of languages, all types of children, and um, they're all kind of just kicked to the curb. And I think it's travesty. So Amanda and other parents got aboard a school bus and headed to court. They argue under state law they were entitled to a hearing before the school was closed. We're a school. We're brick, you know, not just brick and mortar. We have teachers, pupils, administrative staff. We have people that are here. So for them to say that we weren't entitled to a hearing is ridiculous. Please be seated. That's the question Judge Greg Canova must decide. State law says there must be a hearing when a school is closed. The school district argues the school wasn't closed, it was repurposed. The parents argue, to them, it's closed. The school attorney says the law is clear. She suggests parents would do better at the ballot box. When people are unhappy with the decisions that elected officials make, of course they always have the opportunity to try and seek out different elected officials. McMinnemy argues the die is cast. Students have been reassigned, teachers have too. There was no decision today. Some parents left court in tears. The final school bell at Cooper this year will ring just one week from today. The big question, will Judge Canova rule by then? Or will parents, teachers, and kids leave not knowing what's next? Brian Johnson, Como 4 News. Fallsville police want your help tracking down this bank robber. They say he robbed the Kitsap Credit Union earlier this month. The suspect is described as a white male in his 30s, 6'2", tall with an average build. Witnesses say he has blue eyes and light brown hair. He is described as having a pockmarked face. Police in Kingsgate are looking for this man who they say has robbed the same bank four times since January. He struck again this morning. Investigators say he does the same thing every time and could be only targeting the one bank. If you recognize him, call the King County Sheriff's Office. Flames shot into the sky over Renton as fire raced through historic downtown buildings. Come of course, Theron Zahn is live in Renton. And we now know what started this fire, don't we, Theron? Yes, we do, Dan. In fact, fire investigators told me a short time ago they believe it's an overloaded uh, electrical outlet up there in one of those units on the second floor. A news watcher caught the massive flames right after the fire started. You could see the power of smoke from miles away. It took over 100 firefighters to knock down the five alarm blaze. Thankfully, everyone got out safely, but several businesses are in ruins. Thomas Swanson says there isn't much left of his locksmith and vacuum shop. And to make matters worse, he says the economy has been so bad, he couldn't afford fire insurance. Um, when you see everything destroyed, it hurts. It really does. It's, it's your whole life. Now, seven people living in the apartments upstairs are now being cared for by the Red Cross. And I can tell you the customers for these two businesses right behind me, the Comic Den and the uh, Vacuum and Lock Shop there, they are so dedicated to these businesses. They've already set up uh, funds at two local banks to get them back up and running when they can find a new location. Reporting live in Renton, Theron's on Como 4 News. Thank you, Theron. Fire destroyed a new condominium complex in British Columbia. Flames jumped to several nearby houses, destroyed a neighboring duplex, and caught five other roofs on fire. Three firefighters were injured. They are expected to recover. Construction workers using a blowtorch might be to blame. It was an unholy crime. A vandal ransacked a Seattle church. Now prosecutors admit they made a mistake that put the suspect, who's a career criminal, back on the street. Come on for us, Denise Whitaker explains the mistake and new allegations. Police arrested Dan Saunders Monday, accusing him as the vandal who did all of this damage at the Unity Church of God in Christ. Witnesses say he hurled his naked body through a window and went on a rampage. 
just really disgusting. The prosecutor's office filed the paperwork to charge him, but it never made it through the system. Well, we had a miscommunication within the office, and unfortunately, Mr. Saunders was released. Now, we've ensured that that will not happen again. Officers then attempted to re-arrest him. They say he fought back, reaching for their tasers, baton, and gun belt, even armed himself with a screwdriver. Back in court on that incident, Saunders scowled when the state asked for a higher bail. The judge agreed. Parishioners had to move their church services into the parking lot last Sunday because of reports Saunders has hepatitis C. A biohazard team came in to disinfect the church. Witnesses to the vandalism spree said they heard Saunders repeatedly say, I love you, I love you. Parishioners say his brother committed suicide at the church 29 years ago. James Hicks was there. I pulled up and they told me what happened. I went in the back and saw the young man there on the tree. Uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, just shocking. Members plan to be back in their sanctuary for worship on Sunday. The Bible says all things work together for the good. And we don't understand it, but our business is forgiveness and in soul saving. Any soul searching for Saunders must be done behind bars until he makes bail. In Seattle, Denise Whitaker, Como 4 News. King County deputies say tips from the public helped them find a man suspected of shooting a Rottweiler and leaving it for dead. The dog was found on May 31st near North Bend, tied to a log down a steep embankment. He was paralyzed but alive. After four days of treatment, the Rottweiler had to be euthanized. The suspect turned himself into police and told officers he tried to kill the dog because he didn't have enough money to have it put down by a vet. The Oregon transsexual known around the world for giving birth to two children is coming out with a book. It has a long title, Love Makes a Family, a Memoir of Hardship and an Extraordinary Pregnancy. Thomas Beatty writes about his desire to create a baby despite the hatred it brought on from some people. Beatty had what he calls sex reassignment surgery, but he kept his female reproductive organs. Coming up, what caused this tanker truck full of fuel to explode? Also ahead. With a touch of that off button, I could turn off Como's old analog TV transmitter. Today is the day when all TV stations must go digital. I'm Matt Markovich, and we'll be punching that button coming right up. And caught in the act, the cops who snagged a real HOV dummy. And I'm Steve Poole. The clouds will be a little more stubborn this weekend. In six minutes, I'll tell you about the opportunities for some sunshine, too. Stay there. We'll be right back. One letter left. One spin. $10,000 or a bankrupt. I want to go for it. What happens next? Find out next wheel. Tonight at 7 on Como 4. Introducing Paul Diano. Muckle Tio, Snohomish, Squim, Wenatchee, Puyallup, Snoqualmie, Chehalis, Tenino, Hoquiam, and Alki Beach. I did start out in the Northwest. Como 4 Morning News, weekdays from 5 to 7, working for you. Here, Honda, Honda, Honda. Here, Honda, Honda, Honda. Your Honda's here. Visit your Western Washington Honda dealer or go to www.hondadealers.com. Sleep Country's big mattress sale is on now. With more mattresses on sale than any other Sleep Country event. Plus, get one year free financing. The big mattress sale on now. It doesn't get any bigger. Mako paints over half a million cars every year, more than anyone else. And no one gets you back faster. Make your car look good again for less than one car payment. Mako's Ambassador Paint Service is only $249. Ah, sweet mystery of life, at last I found thee. Oh, I know. Spice, the perfect combination of spicy fajita and baked flatbread, made with freshly sliced oven roasted chicken or Arby's classic roast beef. Arby's new fajita flatbread melts. One bite and you'll say, I'm thinking Arby's. The Honda Accord, high performance from a full-size sedan. The Accord engine is stingy on fuel, not on power. Drive one now for just $199 a month. Your Honda's here. Visit your Western Washington Honda dealer or go to www.hondadealers.com. What a sight when a tanker truck carrying fuel slammed into another car in West Virginia last night. The truck exploded. 
partner looking at the aftermath. There were 8,500 gallons of fuel on board. Firefighters said the safest thing to do was just let the fire burn itself out. Amazingly, no one was hurt. In Florida, a car had to be fished out of a swimming pool. The teenage driver says he swerved to avoid a cat, crashed through a fence, and really ended up in the deep end. He wasn't hurt, but it just so happens the accident happened the day the homeowners were supposed to leave for their honeymoon. They have delayed that trip to help clean up the mess. A dummy was riding in the HOV lane in Vancouver, B.C. Police caught the driver of a Mercedes with someone looking rather odd in the front seat. It was a female mannequin with a hood over its head. The man was ticketed, the dummy seized, but not before officers snapped this picture of what not to do in the HOV lane. The transition to all digital TV is here. TV stations all over the country, including Como, now have to broadcast exclusively with a digital signal. For most viewers, it happened without a glitch, but some others just got static. Our tech expert, Matt Markovich, has more from our own transmitter. Matt? Dan, uh, if you had an uh, analog TV like this one with rabbit ears and tuned into Channel 4, this is what you'd be seeing right now, nothing but video snow. But if you had a digital converter box, you'd be seeing me on your old analog TV. That's because this morning, we had to flip the switch on our analog transmitter to off. Throw the third switch! Not the third switch. Remember this scene in Young Frankenstein? Throw it! Well, I walked into Como TV's transmitter on Queen Anne with Chief Engineer John Barrett to throw a switch. So right now, we're at full power analog. Absolutely, 100 kilowatts. We've been broadcasting a traditional analog TV signal ever since we went on the air 56 years ago. But at 9 a.m., we switched off the old analog transmitter for good. Okay, here we go. Goodbye, analog. Hello, digital. It was a scene repeated by TV stations nationwide. So if this is what you got on your old TVs that use an antenna, you know why. We're channel four analog, but technically now we're digital channel 38. That's correct. Confused? I think you have to rescan and then wait. At one of the several DTV help centers, volunteers fielded calls from confused viewers. But during our stay at the Burien Community Center, nobody came in for a hands-on lesson. I will just say like mostly the people that come without knowing anything is because of the language barrier because people who speak English, they know what is happening, but they just have some questions on how to do it. But at a phone bank set up by the Seattle TV stations, the phones rang off the hook. Most of the questions were about signal strength. I could get you before, but with DTV, I can't. That's because the DTV signal is not as forgiving as the old analog signal. Big buildings, mountains, valleys, all can obstruct the digital signal. But for most of us, no worries. Not the third switch. Throw it, I say! Throw it! When we threw our switch, fortunately, it did not spark a monster to life. And hopefully our new digital transmitter won't cause us any sparks. But if this whole DTV thing has sparked a question from you, just go to our website. At the top of the page, you can hit a link that will go to a phone number for that phone bank. And hopefully they'll be able to answer all your DVT, DTV questions tonight. Reporting live at the new digital transmitter in Como, Matt Markovich, Como, Four News. Very informative. Thank you, Matt. Well, the signal has changed, but boy, the weather sure hasn't. Steve, what is it, three weeks now or more we've had uh, weather no, like this? Yeah, uh, you're so right, Dan. And I'll mention it tomorrow, or actually next week on, on Tuesday, if we get that far, it'll be the longest dry streak we've ever had in the May-June time frame. So... We'll see. Right now, it doesn't look like a lot of rain out there, with a couple of exceptions, which we'll talk about. 74 degrees, west wind at 9. 2989 on a steady barometer. Got 50% on our humidity, so we're watching the cascades. This is something we've been doing here for the past several days. We've got some thunderstorms that kind of build up over the mountains. There's always a slight risk that some of that stuff is going to just sneak over into the western portion of our state. So far, it hasn't happened, so we'll hopefully keep them confined there and see if we can get ourselves a fairly decent evening here. If you look at the satellite image, here's another view of it. All these areas where you see the wider looking clouds, that means we've got buildups that are getting to higher elevations here. So thunderstorms in the mountains, the flow coming off the mountains would tend to carry it over western Washington. But at this point, looks like we're doing okay. So we'll keep you posted on how all that's gonna shape up. In the meantime, here's tomorrow's forecast. 
Hmm, looks similar, doesn't it? Well, there's a reason for that. We're going to do essentially the same thing again. We're going to be mostly cloudy in the morning. We'll get you some sunshine in the afternoon and get it to around 70 degrees, although some of you will be in the upper 60s. So just a touch cooler. It could be those clouds might take a little bit longer to burn off tomorrow. Here's what's happening for your lows tonight. Low to mid 50s. We've got gradually increasing low clouds. They'll be around for you tomorrow morning and we'll work on burning that stuff off as we go along. So if you got to have the sunshine, a little patience might be needed in some areas. Shoreline, you've got 73 tomorrow, 72 in Bothell. Bremerton will be in the low 70s as well. South Sound areas, as is typical, might be just a degree or two warmer and also out on the east side, especially around Issaquah and Bellevue. North Bend goes to 72 degrees. Up north, you're talking mid 60s in the Oak Harbor area and 60s will be very common around the San Juans and along the Strait and along the coast where it takes a little bit longer to burn some of that stuff off. We'll go somewhere in the low 70s from Olympia all the way down through Chehalis and into Longview and Portland in the Cascades. Well, if you have recreation plans in the mountains, you really need to be kind of paying attention because these thunderstorms will be up there again tomorrow, about 10,000 feet on the snow level. And then east of the mountains, back to the mid 80s and upper 80s for you folks living there. All right, so we got partly cloudy skies tonight. It will be mild, will be mostly cloudy tomorrow morning. I know, sounds familiar. Increasing sunshine in the afternoon. Let's take a look at your extended forecast and let you know how it's shaping up. Yeah, it looks like it could stay dry long enough to set that record. Of course, we'll keep you posted on that. Next shot of rain, probably late Wednesday into Thursday and Friday. Wow. Have a good weekend. Looking all right. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Sure. Fine $20,000 for an accident she didn't cause. Coming up, the runaround the loved woman got from her car insurance company until the problem solver stepped in. The tests that could save your life. This is a stress test, but I'd be much more stressed out if I were Drew Ray. Dr. Oh, Orton God. is getting in prostate ultrasound. And why having sex could shorten your life. On The Doctors. Monday at 3 on Como 4. Make this summer the best ever at Great Wolf Lodge's enormous indoor water park. Enjoy cabin-themed suites, fun family meals, games, stories, and so much more. Great Wolf Lodge. This summer, get away to Great Wolf Lodge, located just south of Olympia. Book early and save more. There's no time like a Great Wolf time. For the straight story on what makes Big Green Egg the best charcoal grill, come to Sutter Home and Hearth. We'll demonstrate how the green egg is a barbecue, smoker, and oven all in one. Its perfect heat control provides an exceptional barbecue every time. Sutter Home and Hearth, the barbecue and grill store. You go crazy for crisp burritos from Taco Time. Hey, buddy. Just wait till you Brought taste your one. your favorites. Uh, <laughs> Crispy, crunchy, uh, gotta have one. Uh, Anytime is Taco uh, Time. Oh, it's good. Oh, got any Mexican fries? Guess who's here? Hope you're not afraid of needles. Oh. It's Ned. Hey, everyone. <laughs> you go crazy for crisp burritos from Taco Time. Fabulous prizes, cool gadgets, and great trips. It's your reward just for watching Como 4. Introducing Como4Rewards.com. It's like frequent flyer miles for your TV. The more you watch Como 4 and shop at our retail partners, the more points you earn. Then cash them in for tons of cool stuff. Sign up now and get 250 points instantly. Then register your credit or debit card and get another 250 points. Como4Rewards.com, the website that gives back. Upgrade your entire wardrobe at our designer sale. Buy one designer suit, get one free. Designer dress shirts and designer slacks are also buy one, get one free. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. What would you do if you got a collection notice for $20,000 and you knew you didn't owe it? A young woman in Lake Stevens knew just what to do. She contacted Como for a problem solver, Herb Weisbaum, and now she's smiling. Herb's here with this happy ending. Herb? Mary, this problem started a couple of years ago when Karina Baker had her old car picked up and taken away for scrap. Because the old beater was supposed to be crushed, Karina figured she didn't have to file a seller's report to change the title. That was a big mistake. But the car wound up back on the road. The new owner hit another vehicle and injured the driver. Because Karina was the last registered owner, that person's insurance company went after her. The $15,000 is a lot of money to be forking out for something that I didn't cause. I wasn't behind the wheel. 
I wasn't the one driving. It took Karina months to prove she'd gotten rid of the vehicle, and eventually the insurance company dropped the claim. But in April, a letter arrived and the nightmare returned. Without telling her, the insurance company sent Karina to collection. The bill, now more than $20,000. It had been a year, and all of a sudden I got this letter, and I was just like, oh my God. Like, I can't believe that they're coming for me again. I thought this was taken care of. I contacted the state insurance commissioner's office, and they agreed to look into the case. Herb, if you hadn't told her to give us a call, it just wouldn't have happened. Within a week, the insurance company changed its position and sent Karina this letter of apology. It clearly says she is off the hook for that accident. Insurance Commissioner Mike Kreidler says he wants people with problems to call his office. We help people get, collect a million dollars, up to a million dollars a month in the state of Washington that they wouldn't have received from their insurance company, either delayed or denied claims. We're able to act on their behalf. Karina wants everyone to learn from her mistake. Whenever you sell, trade, or give away your vehicle, change the title right away by filing a seller's report. You can do it at any vehicle license office or just go online, and you can do it on the Department of Licensing website. Do it electronically, and once you push that submit button, you are no longer the legal owner of that vehicle. You will find more on our website. Just go to comonews.com. Thank you very much, Herb. Mm -hmm. Hundreds lined up for hours to get their hands on a hot commodity in Auburn. It's not tickets to the latest concert or the hottest toy. The job that people camped out overnight in hopes of getting. Seattle makes a lot of lists, but this is not the best one. The landmark considered one of the germiest in the world. Plus, wait till you get a better look at this. The dog that loves golf. Maybe a bit too much. The Emerald Queen Casino Taste of Tacoma is back June 26th through the 28th at Point Defiance Park. The Taste of Tacoma features 32 restaurants, over 30 food product companies, entertainment stages, a comedy club, and much more. Stroll through over 100 craft booths featuring homemade goods or enjoy the wine and roses wine tasting in the picturesque Rose Garden. The Taste of Tacoma is the ultimate family picnic. Come and see why. The Emerald Queen Casino Taste of Tacoma. Admission is free. I like this one. Spring Meadow. Green is very calming. It's amazing how paint can transform a room. Come to Lowe's for high-quality Valspar paint. You can even get 8-ounce samples to find the color that's right for you. All at our everyday low prices guaranteed. Lowe's. Let's build something together. Come into Lowe's for $5 off 1 gallon or $20 off 5 gallon sizes of Valspar paint. Why do I bank at Columbia Bank? Why do I bank at Columbia Bank? Why do I bank at Columbia Bank? In a word? Confidence. 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 They're strong. Reliable. So I feel safe. Safe and sound. They're the kind of bank? They're the kind of bank. They're the kind of bank. I can actually feel good about. Times like these call for a bank like us. Community banking from Columbia Bank. You'll notice the difference. We all hate the word diet, but then I heard about PGX. PGX isn't a diet, but it helps me lose weight safely. PGX addresses one of the core reasons why we gain weight. It helps reduce food cravings and controls and balances blood sugar levels. It makes you feel full sooner and you don't feel as hungry afterwards. PGX is safe, simple, convenient, and it doesn't contain any stimulants. Go to PGX.com, learn about PGX, and look for PGX wherever natural health products are sold. Take one Honda Pilot and one Honda Odyssey. Add a five-star crash safety rating to both, then make them a top safety pick, and it can help you lower your insurance costs, which is one reason why they have a low cost of ownership. That's how you become the best-selling minivan and mid-sized SUV. Go to Edmunds.com for an independent report on the true cost to own a Pilot or Odyssey. And then check out the affordable leases and low financing you'll find at your Honda dealer. Como 4 News is brought to you in part by Honda. In a Como 4 exclusive, a mother comes to the defense of her son, a YMCA employee charged with raping a 13-year-old girl at the club. She tells Como 4's Keith Eldridge her son thought the girl was much older and that the sex was consensual. 
21-year-old Malachi Powell now officially charged with having a sexual relationship with his 13-year-old that he met while he worked at the Bremerton YMCA. But his mother tells me police have it all wrong. Malachi Powell comes to court charged with second-degree child rape, a felony, and communicating with a minor for immoral purposes. Bremerton police say Powell started trading sexual cell phone communications, and then it allegedly progressed to sexual encounters, which he does not deny. When he called yesterday, was saying, Mom, I can't believe this. I did not know she was 13 years old. Well, they say Powell met the young girl as he worked as a receptionist at the Bremerton Family YMCA. He gave her family a tour of the facility when they joined in May. Her parents are the ones who came to police earlier this week. They were suspicious of their daughter's activities, uh, so they looked at this communication. The, com the communication was very sexual in nature and explicit. But court documents show that Powell believed the girl to be 17. She told detectives she was very upfront about her age with him. I have the reason to believe that she did lie to him about the age. I have seen her, and to look at her, you would not think that she was 13 years old. This puts the YMCA in a tough spot, even though police say none of this sexual activity happened at the Y. They say they go out of their way to safeguard against this. We screen these employees extremely well. We train them all the time. And it's, it's really a disappointment when you find out something like this, but we still don't know it's a fact. I just pray, I pray that he is exonerated. Bail now has been reduced to $25,000. In Port Orchard, Keith Eldridge, Como 4 News. Investigators are looking into whether alcohol or drugs played a role in a deadly head-on crash that killed a Seattle woman. The 39-year-old was driving the wrong way when she hit a truck near North Bend overnight. Five men in the truck were critically injured. They were airlifted to Harborview Medical Center. A truck driver trying to obey the rules of the road ended up taking out a tree this morning. The driver was on Northeast 125th in the Lake City neighborhood when he heard an ambulance and tried to pull over. He slammed into the tree, knocking it right out of the ground. No one was hurt. With warmer temperatures come brush fires. This one popped up on the side of I-5 in Everett this morning. It was quickly put out, but it did cause some delays for drivers because of the smoke. Just like the Marines, Auburn is looking for a few good people, but hundreds showed up and camped out overnight to get a chance to apply to be a firefighter. Come on for us, Rochelle Murcia reports there were so many, some didn't even get an application. All of these people in line are waiting for a chance, just a chance to become a firefighter. From Air 4, you can see the line stretches for blocks. On the ground, at the start of the line, number four position is Scott Simpermosnik. He's been here for nearly 24 hours. Three hours sleep, um, rigs driving by all night long. The uh, guys in the fire service were throwing their lights and sirens on for us every once in a while to keep us motivated, I think throughout the night. The Valley Regional Fire Authority had 200 applications to apply for the firefighter EMT eligibility list. About 350 showed up, some with jobs, others without, passing time reading, playing cards, until 7 a.m. this moment. We're waiting for him to get back from the printer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, follow me. All right. The line started moving and the applications many waited all night for started going out their chance to apply for about a $53,000 a year job. Scott got his. A lot of other big agencies, they, they have about 600 to 3,000 applicants. So um, an organization like this where you only have 200 applications, it just increases your odds of getting a fire job. Last time applications were handed out, only 140 people showed up. This time, there were 150 more people than applications. Boarding volunteer firefighter Ryan MacArthur got the last one. Oh. 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 Number 201 and beyond were turned away and left empty handed. It was nerve wracking just waiting here. You, you can tell I'm shaking right now. Just, just waiting for it. Oh my God. Feels so good. Good to get the chance. Rochelle Murcia, Como 4 News. Property taxes in Seattle could go up if voters pass a new levy. The Seattle City Council voted to put a $145 million property tax levy on the November ballot. If the seven-year tax is approved, the owner of an average Seattle home would pay about $79 more a year. 
Businesses in Spokane are being warned to watch out for counterfeit money. The pen test is not working on the newest batch. The Secret Service says the counterfeiters are taking what used to be $5 bills, washing out all the ink, and making them into bigger bills. Most of the stuff that we're seeing printed here is with a color copper computer. Whether it's scan, whether it's a 3-1 color copier, however they do it. Agents say everyone should look for the watermark and the color shifting ink just to be safe. A local car dealer made an emotional plea before Congress today. Tacoma Dodge is being dumped by Chrysler and the general manager is in Washington, D.C. to fight that. He choked back tears as he explained what this means to his business and his community. As a result of Chrysler's actions, Tacoma Dodge, which in April was ranked the number one D Dodge dealer in western Washington, can no longer sell any new vehicles. We have been reduced to being a used car lot and a neighborhood automobile repair facility. Tacoma Dodge is one of 789 dealerships that Chrysler cut ties with as it tries to survive. Well, the Northwest Flower and Garden Show will not wilt away after all. The owner of the annual event has said this year's show at the State Convention Center in Seattle would be his swan song. But now he's accepted an offer from another show producer to keep it going. So the 21st Northwest Flower and Garden Show will not be the last. A 10-year-old Wisconsin girl has a bona fide excuse for missing class. A personal note from, to her teacher from President Barack Obama. Kennedy Corpus's father stood up to ask the president a question about health care during his recent visit to Green Bay. He told the president his daughter was missing school to attend the event. And he hoped she would not get into trouble. This is what followed. Very interested in, in no, no, I'm serious. So what, what's your daughter's name? Her name? Huh? Her name is Kennedy. Kennedy, all right. That's yes. a cool name. That's a very cool name. Thank you. All right, I'm going to write to, uh, to Kennedy's teacher. Go, Kennedy. So On go. a piece of paper, the president wrote to Kennedy's teacher, right. please excuse Kennedy's absence. So, She's with me, Barack Obama. The fourth grader says she'll frame it along with her ticket to the event, and she'll make a copy of that note for her teacher. Well, that is a one-of-a-kind right wow. there, isn't it? That's pretty cool. An update to the fish-throwing controversy. Will real fish or rubber fish be used at an upcoming veterinary event? The answer is in just ahead. Plus, the Seattle attraction named one of the germiest in the world. And I'm Steve Poole. Most folks will stay dry this weekend, but in 10 minutes, I'll tell you about one area where showers and even thunderstorms could show up. Well, it's looking pretty good out there right now. Stick around. We'll be right back. Always the highest quality, freshest ingredients, and best value. Some things will never change. Now get a large crowd pleaser pizza. Half pepperoni, half sausage, and mushroom for only $7.99. Handmade, home-baked. That's Papa Murphy's. At Seattle Children's, hope is real, and it springs from compassionate nurses, donors, and doctors. Care is a gently placed bandage or life-saving surgery by those who won't let a childhood disease take away a childhood. Cures will be found because of pioneering researchers who refuse to let the word incurable stand in their way. Hope, care, cure. At Seattle Children's, these are the words that define us. This could be the best summer to get behind the wheel of a new 2010 Toyota Prius at 50 miles per gallon. Now, before the state sales tax exemption expires, you can save up to $2,800 on a new Prius during Toyota's Best for Less sales event. See your Western Washington Toyota dealers or visit buyatoyota.com. MoneyWorks is brought to you in part by Washington's Lottery. For the week, the financial markets didn't really gain or lose much ground. Today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 28 points to 8,799. The Nasdaq lost three to close at 1,858. The S&P 500 finished a point higher at 946. The big Paris air show opens Monday, but the economic downturn has taken some wind out from under the wings of airplane makers. Boeing and Airbus usually use the show to one-up each other by announcing huge orders for airplanes. This year, Boeing will highlight its upcoming first flight of the Dreamliner, and Airbus will try to explain the declining popularity of its super jumbo A380. Frontier Bank of Everett just laid off about 45 people. That's 6% of its workforce. 
Frontier has 47 branches in western Washington and Oregon. The bank says the cuts will save more than $2 million a year. The Veterinary Association is going ahead with its fish throwing plan. It had asked the famous Pike Place Market fish throwers to toss fish at a convention coming up next month, but the animal rights group PETA complained. PETA offered to give them rubber fish to toss around instead. Today, the Veterinary Association turned down PETA's offer and will use the real thing. A Seattle landmark marks a dubious list, makes a dubious list as one of the world's top five germiest attractions. The gum wall outside the market theater at Pike Place Market comes in number two on the list by TripAdvisor. Can I just touch it? <laughs> I think they're right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great tourist attraction. <laughs> I wouldn't touch it, though. Starting in the 90s, people would stick their gum here as they waited for tickets. Believe it or not, it's been fully cleaned twice, but the tradition keeps coming back. Ireland's Blarney Stone, the one the visitors kiss, tops the list of unsanitary stops. Coming up, a dog that likes golf a bit too much. Take a look at these x-rays. How they got these things out of the poor dog's belly. Plus... I'm Ken Schramm. Couldn't pick just one, couldn't settle on just two. So I've got three, count them, three issues that I'll give you some quick shots of opinion on. Papa's in the house. Papa John's announces two great classics. The meats with five real meats or the Tuscan six cheese with six different cheeses. Your choice, only $10.99. Five meats or six cheeses, only $10.99 for a large. Foster's Furniture is having a huge two-day sale. This Saturday and Sunday, save 10 to 40% off the lowest marked price of all in-stock and custom-order contemporary furniture and accessories. Foster's Furniture. Distinctively different. Surprisingly affordable. On June 12th, all local TV stations will be broadcasting in full digital television. It's going to mean spectacular pictures and crystal clear sound. But some viewers may no longer be able to receive our signal over the air, even with a digital antenna. If you live in one of these areas marked in red, you may experience loss of service at Como 4. We want to help you continue to receive our news and entertainment programming. Please call or visit one of these resources for more information and helpful advice. Como 4, working for you. It's a fork. Your wombat. Honey, it's the pizza guy. Sure. Me again. Okay, now this is the last time, all right? Thanks. No, we don't deliver anything like this as crispy flatbread. Mm. Mm. Are you having like a party or something? Hello? Introducing the taste that's never been delivered. DiGiorno Crispy Flatbread Pizza. For deliciously Italian-inspired toppings on crispy flatbread crust, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Hello, I don't think we've met. Save at Polsbo RV's grand opening of the new RV Outlet Centers located in Mount Vernon, Auburn, and Chehalis. Save even more at our superstores in Kent and Everett. Every RV has been drastically reduced for this grand opening sale. Hundreds of RVs with all-time record low prices. Short sales, repossessions, rental returns, blemished RVs, nearly new RVs, trade-ins. You name it, we got it. Class A's, Class E's, fifth wheels, and tovals. Save now during the grand opening of our outlet centers at every Polsbo RV location. Right now at our designer sale, you'll find our lowest prices ever on designer suits and non-iron dress shirts, as well as great deals on designer sport coats. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. Papa's in the house. Papa John's announces two great classics, the meats with five real meats or the Tuscan six cheese with six different cheeses. Your choice, only $10.99. Five meats or six cheeses, only $10.99 for a large. Too many issues, too little time. My remedy, some quick takes on a trio of topics that cry out for attention. Let's start with King County officials looking to ease a $93 million budget hole by sticking it to soup kitchens, schools, and other agencies that feed the poor and homeless. The county is looking at increasing the cost of permit fees to all of the above. In some cases, the fees might double. Coming up, imposing a doily tax on little old ladies. Next, a Shoreline City Council member who wants to be re-elected has filed a lawsuit against King County elections for failing to put her name on the ballot. Seems Janet Way failed to pay her filing fee on time. The election officials say that constitutes a failure to file. Janet Way is suing. 
Yeah. Just what we need. Another politician who thinks that the laws and the rules don't apply to them. And finally, a Kentucky minister is urging his congregation to bring their guns to church in celebration of the 4th of July and the Second Amendment. I'm thinking instead of communion that day, the people in the church can just shoot tin cans off the pulpit. Have a great weekend, everyone. If you have a comment, send an email to kentram at como4news.com. Well, Tiger Woods might eat up golf courses, but a puppy in Massachusetts devours golf balls. Eight-month-old Wally is recovering from surgery after swallowing eight golf balls. Wally's owner says he's been acting strange. Then she got an alarming phone call. <laughs> and like hysterics, and he was like, you're never going to believe it. He just threw up three golf balls. Well, doctors found another five in an x-ray. Wally's owner thinks he decided to eat golf balls left around the yard after games of fetch. Well, it kind of looked a little bit like he knew he did something wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, he's like, do I have to wear this for how long? Okay. <laughs> right. Hey, this weather is really something else. Yeah, we're, we're on quite a remarkable streak yeah. here, and if it keeps going, we could set some records for dry. But for now, we've got a weekend to talk about. Let's do that. Here's what's going on outside right now. 74 degrees, west wind at 9, 2989 on a steady barometer. we got 50% on our humidity. And just to kind of finish up on today, above normal temperatures, our normal 69. Today we got to 75, overnight low of 55. And the record you see is 85 degrees. So we've been watching the cascades here. The conditions are right for forming a few afternoon and evening thunder showers. And there are a few out there, most of them kind of in the southern cascades down around Mount St. Helens and uh, just a little south of Rainier. So we're going to continue to watch all those. Some of it could kind of s just move out over western Washington as we get into the evening hours here. But once we get to sundown, then they sort of run out of gas. So uh, right now it doesn't look too threatening, but we'll continue to watch it. Here's on the satellite image you can see right in here. This is where they sort of uh, really get kind of active. And as we go throughout the evening hours, there's still that possibility, so we'll leave it in there. But I got to tell you, overall, it looks a lot like what we did today looking ahead to tomorrow. So we'll start it off somewhere with mostly cloudy skies around the mid 50s. And then in the afternoon, we'll be somewhere in the lower 70s, just increasing amounts of sunshine as we go along. Just remember, there will be those morning clouds, something similar to what we had today. Here's your overnight lows. They're in the low 50s to the mid 50s, and in some cases, the upper 40s. And then the low clouds sort of roll back in. Very familiar scenario, isn't it? And then highs tomorrow, somewhere in the upper 60s to the low 70s. There's a look at the central Puget Sound Basin from Edmonds down through Federal Way and from Gig Harbor over to Renton, all very much in that low 70s range. Might cap out in the upper 60s across the northern counties into the San Juans for our Canadian viewers up in Vancouver and Whatcom and Skagit County. Same story over on the coast, mid 60s for you. And the clouds will be more stubborn about burning off, so you might take, uh, you might take a little more patience before you get to the sun. 9,500 feet on the snow level in the Cascades, and yes, there will be some thunderstorms up there again, so keep it in mind if your recreation plans take you up into the Cascades and east of the mountains, uh, once again, back to the mid to upper 80s. And nationally, it's hotter across the deep south. There's no real surprises here, so if you get on the airplane, you're going to really swelter down here. Every place else, it's uh, actually pretty close to what we have around here, especially in the northeast, somewhere in the low to mid 70s. So we're looking at partly cloudy skies and mild tonight, mostly cloudy tomorrow morning after that increasing amounts of sunshine going into the afternoon. Here's your extended forecast that carries you through the weekend. Yep, certain similarity here. Next significant chance of rainfall, probably near the end of next week. Maybe, maybe as early as Wednesday night. You're all set. Have yourself a great weekend. Thank you, Steve. Sure. More families than ever need food banks this summer when their children won't be getting free or reduced priced meals at school. So, the Como for Problem Solvers are teaming up with Northwest Harvest and Bartell Drugs for the Stock the Pantry Food Drive. Now through Sunday, you can take non-perishable food donations to Bartell Drug Stores in King, Pierce, and Snohomish County. Next in sports, a bizarre day in baseball. The Boopers bash Milton Bradley for his bad day at the ballpark. What happened at Wrigley Field that had the fans and Cubs manager Lou Pinella fuming? This forecast is brought to you in part by Mr. Handyman. Great news, dish viewers. Welcome back. Como 4 is back. Your favorite ABC program. Your favorite local news. Now back on Dish. Welcome back. Welcome back, dish viewers. We've missed you. The M's are on a bit of a roll right now.
right now. They've won six of their last eight games, and if they can beat the Rockies tonight in Denver, the M's would be one game over 500 for the first time since May 7th. Interleague play returns this time in the Mile High City, and Russell Brandon in the first inning unloaded again. He had a monster shot last night. He hit this one out in the first. Watch where it lands. Bounces up on top of that wall there. Brandon with his 15th home run of the year. That's quite a spot for it to land, isn't it? He has four homers in his last nine games. Right now it's 3 nothing for the M's in the third inning. We'll have complete highlights for you at 11 o'clock. How about Milton Bradley's mishap at Wrigley Field today? Cubs and Twins. There's two on, eighth inning. Joe Maurer sends a fly ball to right. Bradley smoothly over, reaches up, one hands it, makes the catch. Then he poses a little bit, throws it up into the stands. One problem, that was just the second out. Nick Punto scored on the play. Minnesota took a 6-3 lead. Bradley was the loneliest man in Chicago. How do you think that guy, Lou Pinella, feels about that? The Cubs lost 7-4. Oh, he's catching it out there. Milton Bradley won't live that one down for a long time. What was he thinking? More bizarre baseball last night in Cleveland. Shin Su Chu with a single in the tent that scatters a flock of seagulls. And the base runner ran. He ran so far away. The ball actually hit one of those birds in center field, redirecting the ball. And it was the game-winning run. The Cleveland Indians get a little help from a flock of seagulls. Former O'Day and Husky basketball star Doug Wren is going to spend the next year behind bars. Wren was sentenced today to 12 months and one day in prison for threatening two people with a gun in a road rage incident last year in Bellevue. Wren apologized for the incident but has maintained that he's an innocent man. He filed a motion for a new trial but the motion was denied. Wren played for the Huskies for two seasons. The Seahawks haven't been practicing every week since the April draft. It just sort of seems that way, though, doesn't it? But today marked the end of the final mini camp of the offseason. It's six weeks now until the start of training camp, but new coach Jim Morris sending those guys home with a little extra homework. In coaching, sometimes there's a little bit of a paranoia of letting your information get out to others. And we're asking these guys to keep their books. And that's different than, than really I've ever done. I've never allowed them to take their playbooks home at this point in the year, but we think it's necessary right now. Take a look at a photo that a parent sent us from a Bellevue over Lake Lacrosse game. It's a physical game, so very physical that some hits can literally knock the shorts off an opponent. That's a Bellevue player being disrobed on the play. He's probably a pretty tough kid, but you know what? It's hard to look tough when your pants are falling down in the front of everybody. Right now he's happy that his name is not printed on his back. No kidding, how embarrassing for him. Thank goodness for those long uh, Under Armour deals. Yeah. Good thing. In case that Good happens. Thing. Thanks, Eric. And we'll be right back. Everything around the house was on fire. It was very emotional because there were so many unknowns and thought I would never see my house again. Our clients are our family and we get to know them on a personal basis. Two or three weeks prior to the fire, we had a meeting to discuss the steps that you need to do in advance of a brush fire to help save their home. A concrete patio in the front area, significant brush clearing, low fire risk, landscaping all around uh, the house. Fortunately, it all worked out. We were able to do what we did to get the house safer and at, at, at less risk from the, the flames that were there. And I, I called Mary and I said, Mary, we're gonna make it, the house is gonna be saved. In life, things, things happen. Um, you've gotta be ready for it. Are you this ready? Get to know a farmer's agent today. Find yours at farmers.com because ready feels good. We're celebrating 50 years in your backyard. AquaQuip provides you the easiest pool purchase experience with complete design, installation, and care. During AquaQuip's 50th anniversary sale, all Doughboy pools are 20% off. Every yard, every budget, plus a free month of BioGuard water care products with every pool. BioGuard, guarding more than your pool. See for yourself why we're more than a hot tub company in any of our nine neighborhood locations. Thanks for joining us tonight. We hope you enjoy your Friday evening, and we'll see you back here at 11 o'clock. Good night. See you later. Good night. Thanks for watching Como 4 News. For more local news, turn to Como 1000 News Radio.
Fisher Communications. There are tile